Okay, I guess we'll go ahead and get started. I want to thank everybody for coming. Looks like we have a lot of experienced EFMers in here at the moment, which is great because there's some new things that are happening that y'all may find of interest. Um, we'll talk about those in a few minutes. Um, I want to give a little, as best I can, summary about what EFM is. Um, it's sometimes very difficult to describe specifically what it is. So. But I, I'll do my best, and part of it will be what it's not, too. But as baptized Christians, we all are called to a ministry, or ministries in some cases. We all have our ministries. <clears throat> Through an in-depth study of Old and New Testament, church history, and theology, and through a re regular practice of doing theological reflections, EFM helps us all discern what our ministries are. And, uh, and deepen its, and gives us a, a, develop a personal theology that fits within the context of the Christian church. Um, EFM doesn't lead to ordination, okay? Um, although if you feel like you might be called that ministry, uh, this will certainly uh, help you discern that. Um, it's a program designed for lay ministry mentored normally by lay people. So it's a lay movement. Um, what it's not is it's not a Bible study in the traditional sense, although uh, studying the Bible is an integral part of EFM. Uh, it's independent, basically independent learning. Um, so, uh, but it's not a therapy session or a counseling program. Okay, make that clear. And issues that are brought to EFM for theological reflection have to be issues that have already been resolved. We ask you not bring issues that are not resolved in your life in order to do theological reflection. Uh, to complete EFM, it's a four-year program, uh, but you only commit to one year at a time. Okay, so it's not like you're signing up for four years of your life today. You know, so. so um, it's a 36-week program that generally follows the schedule here at St. Stephen's. It follows the schedule of, of the school year. So we generally run August through May, uh, some variation of that. Um, yeah, and here it is. It's an independent study with commentary books to, uh, uh, to help guide you. Commentary books on the Old and New Testament on those years. And then uh, a couple of times a year we have what we call our interlude books where everybody studies the same thing. And uh, so um, the main focus of VFM is learning and practicing theological reflections based on a model that was developed by the University of the South in Suwannee. Um, they've been doing this, uh, I just read today, I didn't realize, they've been doing it 40, well this coming year will be their 48th year. So they're about to get it right. You know, they're about to, you know, they, they pretty well got it. But each week, um, the group gathers to review the, the year's lessons for that week. What happens is, depending on what year you're in, you'll do a brief, um, you'll share briefly with everybody what your, your lessons were about that week. And then, uh, and then we'll do a theological reflection. And um, it, the thrust of which is to help you learn how to apply what we learn to our daily life and ministry. That's the big thing. 
how we can take what we get there out into our into the world in our lives as we're called to do as Christians. Um, that's what I've got as far as my description. I don't know if that, there may be. I'm sure there are better descriptions or better ways of explaining it. But we can. We'll have a time for some questions, but later. But what I want to do now, I have three people up here that have. Uh, they're in various stages of of EFM. Uh, Sheila, is, uh, Snotty's finishing her first year in our class, and um, Virginia Hill House. Has, I don't know how long you were a mentor, I but either. forever. <laughs> I mean, just Virginia was my mentor the first two years of, of my EFM training, and then Conley, not. Uh, and Conley and I were in the same class for, I think, two years, wasn't it? I believe. So, yeah. anyway, yeah. so, and I've asked them to be here so that they can describe EFM kind of from their perspective and where they are at the moment. And then I can kind of come back and update you on a few of the changes and. Uh, We'll take any kind of questions and things that you may have. We don't have this decided who's going first and second or whatever, so uh, uh, go ahead. Can we go first? Go sure. Do you want me to, would you like me to stand there? Yeah, why not? Okay. You can take eight hours. On the iPad? <laughs> you, you don't have to. It's so fine. I have to do the tech. I'm sorry. Uh, so my name is Sheila Snotty. Um, my EFM group, who I am so fond of. Oh, it makes me a little teary. Um, and so that's what happens. You, you, um, you form these bonds in your EFM group uh, because you're, you're learning, you're sharing, and, and it's hard to really dive deep in the Bible and in these books and um, in this very intentional plan without being vulnerable, without being very honest and open. Um, and so that's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful part of that group. It helps because um, when you first sign up, or I'll just share my experience, when I first signed up, I thought it was a Bible study. <laughs> and then as I looked at those books that we got to start with and the reading assignments in year one, it just seemed, I seemed, I was overwhelmed and thought, what have I signed up for? <laughs> But I'm so glad that I stuck it out. And I will say that reading the Old Testament in year one, the Hebrew Bible, um, is difficult. When, and it, and I, I've been a Christian uh, at, at a very biblical church, um, new to the Episcopalian faith, but um, at a very biblical church for you know, 20 plus years. But there was so much, and we all experience this, and that's the grace of the class that I had no idea was in there. <laughs> and some of that, maybe you feel, was left out intentionally <laughs> when we were studying it before, because it's hard. It can be hard. Um, some of my favorite phrases are, um, patriarchs behaving badly, which was <laughs> at the beginning of the Hebrew Bible study was uh, our, our mantra. But, um, so it, it, but it's, you know, it, to me, it shows and it, it it wraps so beautifully at the end of the year um, that God is big enough for these questions. Um, and I think it, that is um, the very divine nature of studying. Um, our TRs, we thought we were rock stars off the bat, uh, but Frank shared at our last <laughs> class that in the beginning he was worried about us. <laughs> um, but that is a very special time in class, and I think each week, that is what I took with me more. Um, you know, those TRs um, yesterday, uh, just seeing the sunshine through the clouds, um, reminded me of our reflection that week um, and our, our collect that we came up with. So, I mean, from start to finish, and again, I'm just in year one, um, it's the full gamut of um, emotions and just knowledge that you're learning and it is very well and, and I love talking to people who have done it in the past because I think EFM has listened to that um, it, it's very intentional it's um, laid out even just from the time that Ashley was in year one and she's been in year two with us this year and I've loved hearing hers and that's the great thing about that group too and having different years in there hearing what she's reading but um, 
her experience on the books that we read and the way that EFM decided to break up different things um, just shows they're listening. It's very intentional and um, I do encourage you. I talk to people all the time from the Episcopal faith who know about EFM and they say, oh, oh, it's just not my season or, you know, I just haven't had the time. But um, I, I just don't think you can wait for that. I don't, you know, you're never going to find that. Um, I don't know that that season develops. So I think it has to be intentional. But I, I do, again, um, I had that same fear going in. And I didn't know about EFM until I was already signed up and had paid my money. <laughs> Oops. Um, so, but those who do know about it, that's what I would say is that um, it's definitely worth the time. Um, it's a graceful class. There were always weeks where one of us showed up not quite done with our reading. Um, but um, there's such grace there. And even the EFM book talks about that. This is going to be a hard week for you. Maybe you should start earlier. But there's audio versions of the Bible. Um, so it's just really, um, it's just been a great experience. And um, so I do hope that we'll have more people sign up. And I want to clarify one thing, too. <clears throat> my concern was not for my group doing <laughs> TRs at the beginning. My concern was me as a mentor not being able to get them below the surface <laughs> yes. we were rock on the explanation exploration of the TRs. <laughs> Do you think everybody knows what a Probably not. I'll, I'll be up. That's a great question. And the question is, um, does everyone know what a TR is? Um, when people ask me about EFM when I was a mentor, I would always start out, as Frank has already pointed out, it is not an in-depth Bible study. The scriptures are there for us to read and support really what we're doing with theological reflection, which is what TR stands for. Uh, the theological reflections are the main part to me because it's what connects us and our daily life to God's world. There are many ways to do a theological reflection. Sometimes we do start with experiences from our own life. Sometimes we start with a favorite painting. Sometimes we start with music. And I have had people bring pieces of music as fine as St. Matthew's Passion by Bach to, I think it was you, Connelly, that brought us a song from Drive-By Truckers. Jamie you, brought Jamie brought did the Jamie drive bring that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we we are open to all kinds and all sorts. And of course we also use movies as a basis of theological reflection. But it all in all does connect us. The scriptures always are the basis, but that's not it is not a Bible study, but it's connecting. And I I do want to say this. You get to know this group. The groups are small. They can't be more than 12. And there's, you get to know them pretty well, and you have such a good time. And I'm, I'm always sorry when people stand up and talk about four years that are so, it sounds so formidable. But it is also lots of fun because you learn to laugh together and you do things together, and it is just, it's a wonderful time and a wonderful experience. Um, share with your experience, <clears throat> your take. I'm Connolly Knott, and I was uh, one of Virginia's, <laughs> along with Frank. And uh, if any of y'all had a mentor as good as Virginia, then you've been blessed. She was a great mentor, and we had, I think we had some great discussions and a great group, a great mix. We of had good pupils. <laughs> <laughs> See how good she is? How generous she is? The uh, I, I see a lot of people that I know have been in EFM before, so I know a lot of y'all are familiar, so I, um, bear with me if I sound like I'm telling you things you already know. The, uh, I think education for ministry is a great description for the program. I think it's a terrible name uh, because it, it really, I think it's, it's a little off-putting. And, you know, when you're asked, Virginia invited me to do it one year, and I said, no, no, no. She invited me another year. I might have said no, no, no. It might have been the third time when, you know, when I finally relented. It just seems like a grind, the, the name does. It sounds like you're, you're signed up, you're gonna be in class, and it's more like a discussion group. It's, a, it's like a small group. 
and you, you have the outside readings that kind of help shape the discussions. And, uh, but in terms of what the experience is, it's so much more than just what it sounds like being an academic exercise. Um, you know, and for those of you who don't know uh, about how the, the class structure works is everybody in the group, Virginia said it's 12 or less, they don't all sign up at the first time. So you aren't all going along at the same speed. It's not like you're all covering the same reading materials at the same time. It's more like a, a high school where you've got your freshman, sophomore, junior, senior class, and you're all in there together. So the first years, they'll be reading the uh, reader, readings based on the Old Testament. The second years, at the same time, they'll be reading the New Testament. Third years, will be doing uh, philosophy and theology and fourth years is church history. I'll reverse those. Reverse. Okay. And uh, so you've got these different uh, types of focuses of study happening in the group at the same time with your outside reading. And so there'll be some overlap when you get into the group, but what we've got in the way the uh, discussions are oriented is it's a way for all of these different people coming from all of these different source materials and outside readings to interact together and have a discussion together. So if you're a first year and you're covering the Old Testament, you don't just go in and you're all say, okay, well, let's talk about the Old Testament today. It, it just doesn't work that way. There'll be some of that and some of that will come out in the discussion and the first years might offer some of what, they're, what they covered in their reading. But at the same time, you'll, you might have a, a third year, you know, talking about some philosophy or theology theology that they've been reading about. So it all works together. The, um, the two things I think that I get out of EFM the most are, number one, the idea of thinking theologically, and number two, that kind of goes hand in hand with that is uh, being able to speak more authentically uh, about my faith. Mm -hmm. And so these theological reflections that we talk about, it, it, it's fun that you can bring a painting or that you can watch School of Rock with Jack Black and make that, you know, bring a theological discussion out of that. And so that's fun, but it's also, I think, part and parcel of what the program develops in you. And that's when you go out <coughs> and in your daily life, it's at least with me, what I got out of it was it, it sort of through repetition, you know, throughout the year and then four years of it, you sort of get this habit of the way you think and the way you process things in your daily life. And so you think more theologically. You put it through this filter where you look for God in a situation or in a piece of literature or in something somebody says. And you think about things differently. And so it, it, it's just, just like learning, to, learning a golf swing or anything else. Through the repetition, it becomes natural. And so the second thing I think kind of flows out of that, which is I'd, uh, I'd grown up with, I think, a good Christian education in the Methodist church, and we had lots of good Bible study and so forth, but I never was really comfortable at speaking to people about my faith and making it sound like it was me talking. I always had a, a, a real obstacle with, with what they call evangelicals with a certain type of phraseology. There's certain catchphrases and everything, and it never rang true to me. Never felt like I was wearing my own clothes when I spoke that way. And it's important to be able to do that, and I think that's where the education for ministry comes in. You know, it, my wife was terrified. Every time I tell her Virginia to ask me again to, to do the FM, she's like, oh no, we're going to seminary now and I've got four babies and how are we gonna survive and where are we gonna live? <laughs> so she thought, this means he's gonna be a priest. And, um, but the ministry, you know, the idea of ministry, I think John said it in the sermon today, during the announcements, uh, is broader than just the cloth. And it's the idea of being able to minister 
to people. And you know, one way, one thing that's essential to that is being able to talk to people and find them where they are and speak authentically. And, uh, and by doing this, and part of that is because of the subject matter that we do in the TR that's so, sometimes it's so plain and easy to get into. And the other is through the relationships you build in it because it really is just a small group. And it's important that it's 12 or, or fewer because everybody gets to the point where they're comfortable talking with each other about these things. And so again, it's that repetition, you know, where you're, where you're talking about yourself and it's a safe group and it's a diverse group, age and where people are, are coming from in life. And by doing that and by having those conversations you know, I think the program's well designed to get you to a point where you can go out and express yourself. And when you're done with the four years, then hopefully you've been shaped into something a little bit further along than where you were when you came in. And then you're ready to find another place to fit in at the church or somewhere else, or even, you know, to the point where you can have conversations at work, which can be an uncomfortable place to sometimes have a conversation about your faith, but to be able to do it in a way that's not, like I told one of my kids one time, you know, that the most important thing is, you know, when you're talking to people about your faith is not to push them away from God. There's ways to have these conversations that, you know, you don't know where people are when you're having them. And uh, so, uh, so anyway, so I think those, the, those are the two things that I got out of it the most, which is the thinking theologically and learn how to speak more authentically about our faith. Mm -hmm. And um, if you haven't done EFM, I hope you know something that somebody up here is saying today might encourage you to think about it and to do it. I, I, I think like Frank or Virginia or maybe everybody has already said, I don't know anybody that's done it who didn't enjoy it, even the ones who haven't who didn't finish all four years. Uh, and a couple of people that came through our class didn't complete the four years that I know of. They might have come back and done it. But what they did enriched them. You know, some of them just because of their schedules or their stage in life couldn't put four years together in a row. But that's, that's fine, you know. But I think everybody uh, was glad they did it, and I hope you all do. Thank you, Alan. Um, one thing I want to make clear, uh, after you finish EFM, we don't send you out on a two-year mission or something <laughs> like that, you know. It's just trying to find a way that you can just, in everyday life, you just deal with things better. It's, it's designed, I don't know of anything in the Episcopal Church that allows you to deepen your faith more than EFM. That, that's all I'd say on that part there. Uh, even those that have a crappy mentor. So, uh, <laughs> it, it, uh, it, uh it's it's a great program and uh we're not trying to do a hard sale on anybody here too so please don't take it that way just for grins can i see the hands of people that have that have or are involved now in efm and uh i know all that table is but okay great good yeah we well, can talk, I think, to about any of the ones that have been involved in EFM, and, and they can help answer questions. Um, to explain a couple things, with there is a cost to it. I like everything, there's a cost. Um, and there is a commitment uh, for the, it, it's one year at a time, 36 weeks, but it's not a thing where you can just come and go casually each week. Uh, you don't have to be there every week. There's this thing called life that tends to interfere with that. But, uh, but you have to be intentional about being there. And um, there have been some changes, too, now in the structure. Uh, some of this will kind of tie to people that have completed EFM, especially did several years ago. Swanee, I don't know how many years ago, it's probably been... I don't know, five, six, seven, eight years ago, I don't remember, I don't know exactly, kind of redid their format. Back when I went through and some of the others went through, we had this three-ring binder that had 
you know, uh, had our lessons and stuff in it. Um, Swanee has changed that up in over the years, and they now have a book. Hold on, one second. Okay. Okay. All right. And they've gone to, this is the thing that everybody uses. It's called a reading and reflecting uh, re reflection guide. And uh, that's the main thing, but it outlines the, the lessons and stuff for, for each week. Uh, and it's, ex I think, extremely well done. Um, and then we'll have different textbooks that are used um, for the various years. Um, and so there's first year's Old Testament, and there's a commentary book that goes with that. And then we have a couple of books we call interlude books. They're, they're uh, short. The, uh, it's designed to be done in two weeks that everybody reads those and studies those. And, uh, and just as a kind of an aside, we, we took a different, slightly different approach to those this year. Uh, I had, happened to have some uh, connections at Holy Apostles and did at the time. <laughs> And, uh, but one of the things we did was um, for our interlude lessons, uh, we combined with EFM groups from Holy Apostles and, um, and spent a Saturday at, uh, at one of their mentors' house uh, Saturday morning and discussed the, the interlude books. And it was great, great fun, a great way to do it, I thought. I think all our group pretty well enjoyed Absolutely, that. Yeah. And, uh, and it, was, it was really neat to be able to meet people from other parishes that are doing EFM and have discussions and, and all of them, because we were all mixed up throughout the, the day, the, the morning, when we were doing this. Um, the Swanee's made some changes in, a little bit of changes in their program as far as cost this year. They used to provide all the books and, uh, um, and I think the cost was $425 uh, for the people of St. Stephen's, because we are what's known as a sponsoring parish, so we get a, a little bit of discount. Um, they will not be doing that this coming year. Um, they used to get a discount from the publishers, which allowed them to do that. They don't now. So what the, the total cost now, I think, for St. Stephen's is $325 a year, and you'll get the reading and reflection guide and the interlude books. Um, but uh, the actual basic text will be, uh, you'll purchase that on your own. Um, so net effect is it, it might cost a little bit more overall, like everything else now, uh, to, um, to do it. But, um, but the good news part of that is if you prefer to have an audio book, you can get that. Or if you Virtual. prefer uh, you know, something to, like for an e-reader, you can get it that way. Uh, there are multiple ways to get the, the books and use them. So that's, that's a real plus, I think. Um, also, uh, oh, the other thing I was going to say, so people that have done EFM, there are several I know that did it with the old books that have are, have gone back and started doing it again under the new format. And, uh, and it's, I would high, highly recommend that, too, if you, um, if you want to try that. The, um, the other thing too, this is something new Swanee's announced, and I don't have many details on this. Uh, it's designed more specifically for people that have finished EFM, is this coming year, <clears throat> they're gonna come out with a series of short programs. Uh, they'll last four to six weeks. Um, the first one is designed, it's supposed to come out around the time of Advent, uh, and it's gonna be on spirituality. And that's about all I know about it. I don't know the details of how, I haven't gotten any other details about specifically how it's gonna work or, um, <clears throat> or that uh, type of thing or what the cost might be, things of that nature, whether it's a mentor-led group or just, there, I'm assuming there has to be some sort of leader involved in it, but uh, I just don't have any of those details yet from Swanee. But it's something to kind of keep in the back of your mind if you've already done EFM. Uh, it's a good way to kind of stay in touch. Um, and I guess, uh, the only thing, yeah, yeah, Donna. The schedule. <coughs> okay, we meet. We've been meeting on Thursday nights, from uh, from about six to eight, and uh, 
and we'll start probably this year we'll start around mid-august we'll, we got a little bit late start uh, this past year but uh, in about two or three weeks late but I would like to start about mid-august and then be able to finish early May so that uh, May's up if, especially if you got kids or grandkids that you're doing stuff with May is probably the worst month of the year for stuff going on. I mean, everything goes on in May. Dance recitals, band concerts, choir concerts, graduation. I mean, you can go down the list. It's worse than, it's more, it's busier than December. So I want to try to finish before all that hits so, so, uh, so dramatically on everybody. Frank, is there also still a, a weekday class? There used to be a Tuesday weekday. There's not at the moment. Um, and I know uh, uh, Verna was mentoring a class. You had one on, was it Tuesday night or was it during the day? Tuesday night. Tuesday night, okay. But, uh, but it takes a minimum of six for a class. And so that's the, uh, that's the thing. We, we just barely started with six last, this past year. There is a class at St. Thomas um, across town. I think it's Tuesday night, possibly. Yes, and I know Holy Lou Apostles has Chibita. a day class, I think, that meets on Tuesday also. But... And while we love for people to be a part of our St. Stephen's EFM groups, you're, you can go to another parish if another yes. schedule suits you better. Yeah, yeah. And we welcome people um, from other parishes here, too. Ashley. And I just would say we do take Holy Week off, Christmas, and if you did not, yeah, Spring Break. Spring Break, yeah. That's good, yeah, she's yeah. talking about, <laughs> for yeah. those online listening, taking, and I was going to say that, too, you get, you know, Christmas break and, and all the, the big breaks. Um, but you miss it. You know, it gets mm -hmm. to where it, it's something you miss in your week for sure. You want to? Um, we got a question in the back. You want to? I could bring this. Hold on. Well, the, well that's. Hang on just a let second. me give this to us that way. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> everybody can hear. Thank you. Uh, yeah. My name's Kat. Wow. Um, how do you feel about? Could you go into the curriculum as far as the education is concerned? Like, do you feel smarter? factually, historically, history um, of the Bible and what we're taught, who wrote it, why it was written, does it go into that? Like, how does the education component take you to deeper faith and what that might have been like for those of you who've completed it? Thank you for that question. Uh, I'm just going to let some of the people who have been through EFM answer that one for you. So, Michael, you want to come up and answer? Give your answer. Do my best. <laughs> with the talent of this panel. That's a hard act to follow. An emphatic yes to your question. Yeah. Um, uh, the Old Testament is 100% um, education for yours truly. Uh, the New Testament, you get into that your second year and you think, ah, at last, familiar ground. Not so. <laughs> you read all of Mark one week which is a great thing to do, etc. cetera. Uh, then the years get better. Uh, your, uh, your third year is probably closest to the focus of your question. Uh, there's a, I'm sure I can pronounce his name or mispronounce it, Jarmid McCulloch, um, who is a genius. Uh, and uh, although he has a Cambridge degree, he's at Oxford in a, in a very religious college there. And he's a great person also. And he writes books that thick every year. And uh, the book that we used was uh, Christianity, the first 3,000 years. Um, you can't believe someone can. It's a mind that sees a fact and never forgets it, and never has to go back and check it. Just slap it in and on to the next seven million facts. Then the best year of all is the fourth, the big surprise. And you get these excellent small treatises by English and US theologians. Uh, and there are about eight or 10 of them. And you think, eight or 10 books? They're just a delight. They're like a dessert after the three years you've put in. So an emphatic yes 
And while I have the podium, <laughs> I'd like to end with, uh, with two comments, uh, flexibility um, and, um, and fabric. Um, it's an extremely flexible, I mean, Connolly and Frank have, uh, have mentioned this. By the way, uh, our mentor was Scott Reed, uh, who deserves a, a shout out because he and Frank did our last two years together, but Scott's a, a marvel. Um, on the uh, flexibility, it's been alluded to, but um, I would say 40% uh, of the people that I EFM'd with, and it was a different group every year, were not from this parish. Uh, and boy, were they some impressive people that came in. Uh, and uh, three of us got our degrees just now. Uh, and uh, Cindy joined us for the fourth year. Uh, but Steve Oakes and I had been together all four straight through. So our group of three that just graduated illustrates my point on flexibility. Steve and I did it four straight years, and in comes wonderful Cindy. And we, we really enjoyed being the fourth years that year. Finally, <clears throat> fabric. EFM is in the fabric of this parish. There are dozens and dozens of people. Many sitting here, I had no idea I had been EFM. I learned a lot about EFM just listening to the presenters, the pre-2016 EFM. Uh, there are so many people that have done it here. So I hope you consider it. Can I add something? Yeah. To your question about education, I wanted to, to backfill a little, about, a little bit about what Michael said about uh, the scripture years where you're doing the Old Testament and the New Testament, you're not just reading the scripture. Uh, at least uh, I assume the materials still have the commentary. Mm -hmm. like, I was under the old materials 12 years ago, I guess, when I graduated. So when you go through doing the Old Testament, you're not just reading through the Old Testament. You're doing that, but the materials have some excellent commentary that gives you a little bit of the, uh, of the context, the historical context, uh, that also gives you a little bit of the um, context of the writers of the Old Testament uh, and peels back some of the surface on some of the scripture, which to me is always, especially in the Old Testament, in a lot of cases, been a little bit baffling. And, you know, what is, what is, what are we supposed to be getting out of this you know, out of this verse or this passage. And the materials are really good at, uh, at, at opening that up and not necessarily answering all of your questions about it, but giving you enough tools to get a little bit of a grip on it and give you some direction and uh, encourage you give you the, that, that feeling of getting, that I'm getting something out of them, and there's more here to get, you know, to where it opens it up to additional study and additional reading, where it kind of makes you hungry for more. It gives you enough information, and then, you know, as you go on, you know, in your life, and the next year, and the next year, and you're doing your devotional or whatever you do, that there's, you, you've got a, a doorway into it where, to me, before, with some of these passages, it was just baffling, you know. Yes, absolutely. I think so, with me, absolutely. And, you know, a lot of that is, it's, and, and it's kind of an Episcopalian mindset, I think, where uh, I, I think a lot of us, not true for everybody, but a lot of us, I think what we like in the Episcopal Church, I'm speaking for myself, is the, um, the living in ambiguity. Yeah. <laughs> and because uh, there's a lot of that in the, in the scripture. And, um, and it, you know, in ambiguity, I think, is where you can find some of that enrichment because it's an invitation to explore more. 
and uh, but I, like I said, what we need to do that is you need some tools and a little bit of direction. You need a compass and a flashlight. <laughs> and you get that with, with, with the materials and they sort of point you in that direction and you get a, 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 a sense a sense of uh, how some of these uh, complicated messages in scripture can hang together in a coherent uh, message. You know, and it's one of those, it's, you know, the Bible's so great because it, it, it holds up to further reading you know, and further exploration and a, a, a passage that you didn't get at all 10 years ago and then you thought you got six years ago, you read it again and you find something completely new and different in it, you know, and so, but the, the main thing is kind of finding that key to that door to get into it in the first place, to get over some of those, um, some of those really difficult, there's some obstacles uh, in scripture. There's, uh, there's a lot of passages that the first time you read them, or if you read them on the surface, that are frankly just too hard to think very much about. You know, that just seem like they don't fit what you thought the Bible was about. You know, and uh, you get the tools to sort of grapple with those. And I think that's the best we can get. And I'll add to that. I like I like what you said, the spotlight, because it does. I mean, it, it puts a light on the irony that you know you see that isn't always talked about out loud. Um, uh, so it's um, it's yeah, it's there. I think what you're asking for is it is really there. And uh, and I think especially for first year, that was a lot of our experience. Um, and um, that's also the beauty of having the different years in there, is that as Ashley relived it, you know, she was able to share and oh yes, and uh, you know, it's just that um, going through it together. Um, yeah, Ashley, was Ashley was rookie of the year her year, yeah. <laughs> but we, uh, yeah, so that's, um, that it, it does, it does um, ask the hard questions, give you a lot of answers, a lot of different opinions um, to help you to, to really be a really deep dive into everything. And uh, I don't know what time is it? It's real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so this is in part an answer to your question about what all is involved, but it also, to me, reflects a theological reflection in motion. Third year, church history. And uh, one of the people that we studied was William Wilberforce, who was the British parliamentarian who advocated for the abolition of the slave trade. And I just never had connected that with church history before, particularly, didn't know the story. Um, my fourth year of EFM, I was actually living in Texas. And so I wasn't able to be with my people that I've been with for three years here in Birmingham. But my son was having some problems and I came back to Birmingham to stay with him for several months and try and help him stabilize. And while I'm here, the Amazing Grace movie came out. That's the uh, biography of William Wilberforce, the British parliamentarian. And I got to go see that movie with my EFM buddies that I had been you know, doing EFM with for three years. So I was recognized the specialness of that opportunity that I'm back and I'm able to go to that movie with my friends. Then like three months later, I go to England and I'm in York and I go to the Minster there and I'm wandering around and all of a sudden, there is a statue of William Wilberforce. I had completely forgotten that the district that he represented was York. And I'm standing there in tears. And then I'm taking pictures of the statue and I'm like, oh wow, this is so cool. I go back to my church in Texas, trying to figure out what I'm gonna give my minister, my priest for Christmas. I'm going like, I'm gonna give him a picture of the William Wilberforce statue. And I wrote a little note about my adventure with William Wilberforce and what I'd learned from EFM and you know, gave it to him. He didn't really say much of anything, but the next Sunday he preached about William Wilberforce <laughs> and that was my answer. So I realized that I was living 
oh, with this awareness of this theological thread that ran through my life. Thank you, EFM. Yeah. One thing that, uh, kind of a word of warning about EFM, um, especially if you're from a more fundamental background like, like I grew up in, it will challenge you in a lot of ways because the stuff you hear on the surface as you start digging in you learn a lot of a lot of different things about that um but ultimately it, it greatly deepens your faith i think it did mine and um so um i, I would highly recommend that we uh, it, it's like sheila said earlier the when the my the first year people this year were reading in the old testament uh and that week after week, come and say, I just can't understand how a God of love wants to go in and have them slaughter everybody, you know, things like that. And uh, but I, I think the and this is the commentary book for year one, by the way. Uh, I think that uh, the author that did a pretty good job of helping. I'm not going to say explain it, but I have helping create some awareness and questioning about it and so forth, so that. Uh, you get a better understanding of how it was presented. Not so much, uh, how is it? Not so much that God has changed, but man has changed, mm -hmm. and where that, how that change came about and did. So we're we're about to run over, and I, I appreciate everybody being here. If you're in, interested in learning more about EFM, or think you might be interested in doing it um, this uh, this coming uh, this coming fall. Please see me after this and let me at least get your name and email address and phone number or something so that I can contact you about it and uh, and we can discuss it in a little more detail if you like. So, And right. there should be a link for those watching online that people can click on and oh, get well, more information that will okay. lead to you. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> and thanks to y'all. Appreciate that. Good job, Frank. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it was good.